This is the Anything Goes with Jackson Neal podcast. Welcome back. I'm your host, Jackson Neal, here for episode number 103. Today, I'm going to be talking with Noah James about his latest project, The Majestic Travels of Orcamane and Ogie. But first, I just want to remind everyone that this podcast is available on all of your favorite platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and SoundCloud. It's also available on jacksonnealpodcasts.com, the home for all of the podcasts I publish. So recently, I had a chance to talk with Noah about his latest project. He did it with the producer Nug Life. It was their first project they worked on together, and it turned out really, really, really good. Uh, Noah's quickly becoming one of my favorite independent rappers, especially out there uh, on the West Coast scene. He's a really, really fun guy to listen to, and I had a blast talking with him. Here's my conversation with Noah James. All right, sweet. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the process behind this project, the majestic travels of Orcamane and Ogie? Um, you know what's crazy? This is how I met Nug Life. Nug Life is the producer and the engineer for the project. You know, I get alerts on Google about my name. So Google sent me an alert, like, all right, you got mentioned in this interview. Now I just check it and make sure, like, it's, is what I said, or is really me? So I went. I saw the saw my name. Uh, Nug Life was getting interviewed, I think, by Underground Hip Hop Blog, and he mentioned artists that he wanted to work with, and he mentioned me. Right, and I'm the type of dude that I won't wait till you reach out to me. Like you know, I'm all about like, so you already want to build. I'm already like to build. I'm just going to hit you up. So I hit up Nug Life, like, yo, let's set up a session so we can cook. Uh, so for like three, four months, we met up like every Wednesday, like just just producing that, mm-hmm. just 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 cooking every Wednesday, just you know, just getting it in, like. That was like the beginning process of it. Like, all right, this is the the meetup. Now, this is the the plan. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done that before with the producer? Just meet up, like I guess, just once a week. Just set a day once a week and meet up to work on music. Um, it's like yes and no. Like some like I was in a I was in a um, in a label called Black Cloud Music, and. Curtis King was a producer and artist on it. My boy Jinx was on it. Oh, gosh, Leota. So I would actually schedule time with me and Curtis would, like, sit down and actually songwrite or, you know, kind of, like, map things out. Like, I don't know. I think that scheduling, I think this is when I start getting the organization in my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> if it's consistent enough, only gr- only greatness can come out of it, and I don't have to produce so many songs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to do I don't have to do sixty songs to pick twelve. Mm-hmm. Like I don't have to pull all nighters if I just keep it on a consistent schedule. Exactly, I, and I guess so. You're doing this consistent schedule with Nug Life. When did you know that th- that these sessions were going to start to turn into a full length project? When we, we shit, yeah, probably like in the second month, and we realized we already had like eight songs. Okay. And we didn't realize we had that many songs. We were just, it, it was like this was a schedule. I come in, he play a beat, and this is the first time he played a beat. Um, I write the verse and the hook. I take it home. I finish it. The next week. I record it, then I start on another song, and I did the same process. So it's just, a cons- like you said, a consistent week in, week out. You have that schedule. You have that process. And before you knew it, yeah. you had all those tracks. Yeah, I had all them tracks. And we're just sitting down, and we're messing with so many different sounds, like from boom bap to, like, U.K. trap, kind of like, uh, uh, 
what's that like a little bit of uh, uh what's that sound out there they mess with it's like grime. real drum and bass yeah a little grime like that would preserve got a little grime feel to it juggernaut got your 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 southern oh my bad got juggernaut got your your basic trap then i got my boom bap in there like so i was like with him because he's a producer that he's a young producer too so he just trying everything it 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 just made everything just be so like i don't know quick effortless because we were just like yo let's try this let's try this mm-hmm. let's try this yeah those, and those it, are the it was uh you know, sometimes like the be- the best case scenarios, and I kind of wanted to ask you about this. You know, work. You, you know, I love the sonic la- uh, the landscape of this project. Like you said, all these different you know different kind of styles on there. I guess I found that kind of interesting when I saw that it was just one producer. I guess <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it was like it was like what was it about working with Nug Life that allowed you to try all these different things that allowed you allowed you to do all these different styles? Uh, his his confidence in it. Like, his confidence in it, because I'm already confident in me. Mm-hmm. So his confidence in, to, in his product and his producing, it made it a little effortless. Because some people like, yo, I got, some, I, got some, I got some shit. It's a little different, but I don't know. I want to hear that. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to hear that shit. That shit is crazy. Nah, bro. Like, be into your shit. This is your shit. Hell yeah. Yo, bro, I got this shit in Smack. He played me this beat. I said, damn. And that was like the burn slow beat. That's on his project. Then we did a, a juggernaut. I said, yo, man, I got this hook. You know, I'm a juggernaut, bitch. And he just started going into it. So it was like he was into it. And me having trust in him, too. Like, I think that that plays in my favor when I create with a producer because sometimes they don't get that. Like, I have to able to trust you in your creative process. Mm-hmm. Like, I have to trust you to tell me that I'm not in the right pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there has so to be that, like, that mutual trust there between the artist and the producer to, to make any song good. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be like, you know, because I don't have the super ear of like producers and engineers, you know what I mean? I'm the different instrument. I'm the, that's not, and sometimes I do have it, depends what I'm listening, but I have to trust who I'm working with where you have that ear, Mm -hmm. where, you know, you need to tell me to, you know, yo, no, you go, your voice, your vocals lit right now. (laughs) And I said, I'm passionate. Mm -hmm. I'm very passionate. Like, you know, it's, it's, I have to trust them and, and, you know, be coachable. I think mean, like being forever a student is my best mindset because it just it makes a lot of shit effortless, man. Mm-hmm. Of course, of course. So I kind of want to get into you know the name of this project and the whole theme of this project. Uh, can you just tell me what why this aquatic theme and I guess why did this inspire you so much? Um, like you know, my AKA my is Young Orca, mm-hmm. right? So. In 2000 and two, 2013, I got I got on my first major tour with MERS and Prof. Mm-hmm. So, like, and I dropped a project called The Adventures of Young Worker. Mm-hmm. So, it's been like this, um, I don't know, like, I love orcas, I love elephants, I love, like, Anything that got to do with balance and majestic beings, animals, people. So I, in this this part of my life, I'm in the aquatic part. Of, I'm in the water part. You know, I'm in the more trying to find uh, truth and self-love and forgiveness. And I'm trying to get all of these uh, past heartbreaks out of me. And I think Orca was like the best symbol for me. Mm-hmm. So since 2013, I've been running with Young Orca, Orca Main, then building with Nug, it was so like water, like creating it. It was like easy, knock it out. People were like, damn, that fast? I'm like, man, that fast. It's, you know, so I said, you know what? This is like the part two of the adventures of Young Orca. This is like me mastering myself as Orca Main. Mm-hmm. 
Like I know I'm no longer a young worker. I'm Orca Man now. And I have my homie OG and OG is Nug Life's character where he just travels to smoke people out and become friends with them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's like you know what I mean? So like you see the orcas, you see OG in the submarine, you see us on this majestic this majestic adventure. Could even we went and toured in the bay. So on the process of creating this project, we went to the bay for two weeks and I did a tour and he his homie has an apartment up there and we created uh Be Who You Are and Got Us Up There. Okay. So like so we took it like from LA Empire to Los Angeles to Oakland. Mm-hmm. So it was like uh, it was a majestic travels, man, with Orca Main and OG. It was really like a, a dope process. To, I never done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I, like, I, I think it really. Ahead. Yeah, I think it really came across as something really, really cool because you know, obviously, that's a name that that draws you in. I think, and then looking at the cover art and everything. But now, as you explain it, I think it, I think it makes perfect sense. And you know, when I think of something like water, I think of kind of like it flows. You know, like a water flows. Yeah. And I think that was something I listened through this album is that you know throughout these nine tracks there's a flow to it that even though there might be a, they might be a little bit different there's still a, mm-hmm. a, an underlying flow to it so I think that's that's how I kind of see the water theme playing out in this. No, you perfectly right. Like you perfectly right. Like when you get to Berserk, and that's the rough waters. When you get to Juggernaut, it's like oh, it's still rough. Uh huh. Like you know, if you look at the cover. The island has a face of a goddess, and that's why the last track is goddess. Mm-hmm. So okay. it's like I'm 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 showing like this this start off with sunny, you know, then it gets a little dark with be who you are, then get like mirror mirror, then it gets sunny again, then it gets a little more like consistent, then it gets rough as hell, mm-hmm. then it gets calm, very calm. So it's like. Trying to give this, trying to give a mo- uh, uh, water an emotion or give water my emotions uh, in a sense. So that's how you kind of you kind of picked it up. Yeah, I think that I, that, that makes so that's so cool now that you explain it like that. You know, I grew up here on um, the East Coast in in south, uh, southern New Jersey, right by the shore. And when that kind of reminds you of talking about the I go berserk and juggernaut into goddess, is those times where you see giant waves coming. They're just giant choppy waves, and then after they're done, you almost see kind of like the ocean kind of flatten out a little bit. Once the giant waves yeah. are done, it returns to that calm. Not real calm, man. That's exactly what it is. You know, water is powerful and water is everything. So, like, we wanted to see within nine tracks, can we? And, and I feel good, like, you know, been creating this project was very a dope, a dope process. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I could definitely, I could definitely tell it. It definitely comes through in this one. Uh, another thing I noticed about this about this project is there's a you know a lot of features on it. There's a lot of other artists making some guest appearances. I guess why did yes. you, why did you want to have a lot of guests on this project? Is is carrying on the tradition of the adventures of Young Orca that I dropped in 2013. I feature a lot of my homies that I've been building with at the time. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, it's not just a trip with me and OG, it's a trip with me and Yoshi or me and Pretty Pace that we just went on a tour in Texas. Or, you know, me and Cash Lansky, that's my brother from Arizona, and I'm I'm in Arizona consistently. So it's like, you know, just showing, like, uh, my range of friendships I have, Mm -hmm. even the range of age and gender and, like, and that was the whole adventure was like just showing uh, my pod, in a sense. Okay, I like, like that. Yeah, like because that's how you know my like, you know, where I'm from is like if you with me on the pod, they go to pod. You know, and the pod is me pursuing our dreams when it comes to like me and the people who that like facilitate like that comes around my energy and they like you part of this pod. If you pursuing your dreams. You know, we're pursuing our dreams because I may help you get there if I have the capabilities or if I have the resources. You know what I mean? It's like, like my brother Triz, like that's my that's my little homie from Fontana. 
So, and I've been knowing him since he was in high school. So we always kind of build with each other since then. Mm -hmm. So it's like just building that 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 um, that that friendship. And in the music business, that you know, people say, "Oh, it's a myth. It's a myth that you, it's a myth you can't have friends in the music business." It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I like, like you mentioning Triz there. I had him on the show a couple months back. Really, really fun guy to talk with. Um, but just you know, talking about you know having your friends on these and having the people that, you know that you're close with on this project. I guess what is it like making music with the people you're close with as opposed to people who maybe you've never met before? Is there kind of a, a familiarity there, a comfortableness making that making a track? Um. I do both because some of the people, like, say, Yoshi, I've only been knowing Yoshi for a year, mm -hmm. you know, and this is me and her first collaboration. So it's like some of them, are like, some people on the tracks I've been known for 10 years. Okay. So it's like, to me, like, it's, it's really a vibe. You know, we can be knowing each other for three days, but it's, I, I just have to be able to vibe who – who they are, who the, you know, not the artists, not even the music, man. Like, I got homies like fucking Eddie Baker, where me and his music are <laughs> so far apart. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's so different, but even like we vibe with each other, so it doesn't it doesn't make it um, weird. You know, we find our comfortability on a track with each other. Yeah, it allows you to kind of collaborate with people maybe a little bit outside the box from what you what people might expect because of your genre. Yeah, you know, and even with me, like sometimes you might get some conscience shit or you might get some rage anime rap shit. Like, like I learned I learned to truly be myself and kind of like rap what I really love about, like what I really love. Like I really love like rapping my heart out that I really love raging and having my mm -hmm. So yeah. I had to figure out, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I was just agreeing with that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just had to figure out the balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, cause like right back to that whole, that whole water kind of, um, the whole water idea. Um, I noticed another, you know, this, the track I go berserk, you have a, uh, you that's a song that in my mind just is absolutely crazy one track that really really stood out on me you've talked about the raging kind of aspect that that's one that really 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 i was listening to i was like popping my head like wow this is really getting me going um I, i'm just curious have you even have you performed that live and if so what's the, what's been the reaction to that one a mosh pit <laughs> it's like shit up mosh like i don't care if it's five people in the crowd or a hundred it's like it's and it don't matter if it's girls or it doesn't matter. It's like straight, like, headbang, like some fucking system of a down type shit. Like, you just fucking, it's crazy. I used to be in bands, you know what I mean? I used to be in a metal band. I was a screamer in a band. So it was like taking that rage and into tracks like this is just, it's crazy, man. It's like the same energy, but just. Yeah, it's wow. I got another track called Boo's Hungry. Mm -hmm. And it's a track dedicated to Majin Boo. And it's like, it's vicious. <laughs> it's vicious. I'll have to check that one out, too. I mean, I, I just really love I Go Berserk. So you were in metal bands, you, you said, and you were kind of a screamer. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Like, back in the day, like, right when I got out of high school, I had homies that, that was, in, you know, our, our scene in San Bernardino was mixed. You had bands, you had rappers, you had fucking gangbangers. So I was kind of mixed with, with everybody. So, you know, rapping was kind of like, I already did that, but I hanged out with my homies that was in band. And they started, like, you know, rehearsing and shit, and I just started screaming the homies' lyrics after he said it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, deep-ass, like, fucking from the diaphragm type shit and it, that just I don't know I think that, that helps that helped me like engage another instrument I, I could become like like it was, uh, I was another band called Neighborhood Watch and that was just like the same shit like this footage of me performing with my shirt off 
and my homie Stevie Crooks, that's like six foot nine, is on my back, and he got a ski mask on, and I got a Jason mask on, and he's rapping, and I'm carrying him on stage and shit. It's like it's, it's madness, man. It's that's fucking, wild. It was madness. Yeah, but it was it was like you know, and I'm like at this time, like right now, I'm four fifty one. Mm-hmm. So I used to weigh over six hundred and nine pounds. Okay. So there's a and this is me from playing football. I did sumo for like a year and a half. I was a I did bodyguard work and shit. So like I use I really use my size to my advantage. But when I start performing, like with my size, but I'm fucking jumping and I'm getting in the mosh pit and shit, I I like I found something. <laughs> like it was really like, oh shit, this is wild. Like <laughs> It just sounds absolutely <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it was wild, bro. Like, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna see I'm gonna see the footage. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Steven this, the footage so you can see this shit. It's on you it's on my YouTube. Okay. It's wild. <laughs> I'll definitely check that out. That sounds hilarious. Um Yeah, this sounds crazy. So I guess now just, you know, I, I'm seeing that you have this, this upcoming, uh, the Orca Cactus Tour uh, with, date, you know, with dates yeah. coming up. Just, I guess that's in the future right now. That's your next thing. How are you feeling going into that tour? I feel good, man. Like, I feel like I'm on my, I'm on my indie tour shit right now. Like, I'm trying to just be out more and have more music drop in. So, like, I'm, I'm up to date. I'm, like, I'm... What I planned and what I scheduled on my time right now. So it feels good that everything I've been planning starting since June of last year is actually, like, taken off right now. Mm-hmm. That would make me, um, that would make me happy. Like, you know, I didn't, I don't put my faith in no one's hands. I just do the work I need to do and schedule out right. And hopefully it plans out right and, it did so like new music me and v a mascot about to do some new shit i'm about to drop a single june 28th with a brook so it's like i'm ready mm-hmm. i got another tour coming up in august in uh northeast like portland and shit then i'm trying to make my way out in the east coast in october Sounds great. If you're ever out here on the East Coast and around Philadelphia, I'll definitely make sure to go out to a show because I need to hear I Go Berserk live. Oh, yeah. They're going to be lit. They're going to be lit as hell. Again, a big, big thank you to Noah for coming on to the podcast. I had a great time talking with him. Just a really cool, genuine guy. Remember, go check out his brand new project with Nug Life, The Majestic Travels of Orgamane and Ogie. I think in addition to being a great hip-hop project, it already has to be the top, towards the top of my list for the best names of an album here in 2019. Uh, a really, really fun project to listen to as well. If you want to check it out, go down into the show notes. There I'll have the link to check it out on your favorite streaming platforms, as well as Make sure to follow Noah. You know, he has these tour dates he's planning on doing around, you know, around the country, and especially on the West Coast if you're out there. Make sure to go follow him. I'll link to that in the show notes as well so you can keep up to date on any of his live shows or when he releases some new music down the road. And that will wrap it up for this episode. Thank you so much again for listening to the Anything Goes with Jackson Neal podcast. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and rate it on your favorite platforms as that does a lot to help grow the show. Remember, new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. For more episodes, go down to the show notes and visit the link to jacksonnealpodcast.com. There you'll find all of the episodes to this podcast as well as the Jackson Neal Music and Sports Podcast. New episodes of the Music Podcast on Sundays with the Sports One coming on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you're a big fan of the show, maybe consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. For just a couple dollars a month, you can get access to bonus content from my interviews here on Anything Goes, including today's with Noah, where I ask him about the Knicks, him playing 2K, and all this really fun stuff, so you make sure you want to go check that out. On Patreon, you also get access to bonus segments from both my sports and music podcasts. I write, record, and produce these podcasts myself as a full-time college student, so any little bit of support really does go a long way. Link to Patreon down in the show notes. If you want to stay up to date on everything I'm doing, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at JacksonNeal20. 
Today's music is by Analog by Nature with their song CDK Sunday. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you all next time.